This is lecture 18 about differentials. Nothing especially new here. Uh, you already know about the derivative and this is the derivative uh, revisited in, in slightly different form. We'll start off with something that has a fancy name but is a very very simple idea. It's called the linearization of a function. And if you think about what that word might mean, it's exactly what we're talking about. If you take a function which has some sort of a curve as its graph, and you look at it at any point, you know that we did this in lab, if you take any point A and you go up to the curve at that point, and you zoom in, window in on this point, then what you will see is that the curve turns into a straight line. If you got in close enough, your window would show something that looked like this. And you remember that we did a lab where you actually had to calculate the slope of that apparent line, which would be approximately the slope of the tangent line to the curve right there. Well, what that means is that a curve looks, a curve that's differentiable, a curve that has a derivative, looks locally like a straight line. And that's an important idea that allows us to do some very, very useful approximations. So the first thing that we're going to talk about here is this linearization idea, which is simply to say, if you draw the tangent line here, okay, just draw the tangent line there, and get your hands on the equation of that tangent line. Of course you know how to do that. But now, instead of writing the equation of the tangent line, like y minus y0 equals m times x minus x0. Write this as a function. And of course the function would be the y, that's the dependent variable, and so you would write y equals y0 plus the slope, which of course is the derivative, times x minus x sub 0. And this y, we're not going to give it a fancy function name, we're going to call it l of x. And this l of x right here is going to be the equation of this line. Now what good is all that? Well, for example, if you wanted to approximate this function f, maybe because you don't have a good formula for it, maybe it's invisible for some reason, if you wanted to approximate the value of the function at some point near a, right? you don't know what the value of the function is, well what if you just go up to the line going up to the line is almost as good as going up to the curve as long as the point that you're picking is close to A. So if you picked a point B here that was very very close to A then the question is what's F of B and if you don't have a formula for this function at least maybe what you could do is approximate F of B by going to the line and plugging in B into the equation of the line. Now, a day or so ago, you'd have done that simply by going, okay, you plug b in here for x, and then you would calculate a y value, which would be right there on the line. Okay, and now we're doing exactly that same thing, except we're using functional language to do it. So we have to construct the linearization of this function. All right, let's do an example so you know what we're talking about. Suppose that the function that we're talking about is something like f of x equals square root of x. <clears throat> and the point that we're talking about is a equals 4. Right? The graph of this is pretty easy. The square root function looks like this. And at a equal to 4, you'd be about there. And you go up to the curve and your tangent line is going to look like this somehow. Right? So I want the equation of that tangent line and I want to write it in this L of X form. All right? So that's not too hard. F of 4, F of A, of course is the square root of 4 which is 2. And so we need the derivative to get the slope of the tangent line. F prime of X is the derivative of the square root. We've been here many times. This is going to be 1 half x to the minus a half. And we don't care about that derivative everywhere, we really care about that derivative only at 4. So if we plug in 4 we get uh, 1 half times 4 to the negative 1 half. 
4 to the negative 1 half. What does that mean? 4 to the negative 1 half means 1 over 4 to the 1 half. And of course, 4 to the 1 half is the square root of 4, which is 2. So this is really 1 half. And so we get 1 half times 1 half, which is 1 fourth. And to no one's surprise, the slope of this line is 1 fourth. So the equation of the tangent line, if we were to write the equation of the tangent line, would be y minus the y value. y minus 2 is 1 fourth x minus the x value, which is 4. Except I'm not going to write it that way. I'm going to write it in the functional form. So the function is going to be this. And so that's my L of x. It's going to be 2 plus 1 fourth times x minus 4. Right, now just sit back and look at this thing. This isn't that bad. All it is is a function. And what kind of a function is it? Well, it's got x to the first power, and you're not doing anything strange here. It's a line. That's why it's L. L of x is just a line, and it's just written in the functional form. So the, the value of this, why we want to do this, is so that, for example, we can plug in anything near 4, and calculate the y value on the line just by plugging into here. So here's an example. Suppose I wanted to calculate um, the square root of 4.1. Right? Then 4.1 is pretty close to 4. So my expectation is that if I follow the tangent line, that's almost as good as following the curve. So I'm going to go along the tangent line and calculate L of 4.1, which I'm taking as my approximation for F of 4.1, the square root of 4.1. So I'm going to calculate L of 4.1, which is really easy to do. You just take 2 plus a fourth times X is 4.1. And I can do this in my head. 4.1 minus 4, well, that's 0.1. And so we've already got an answer here. 1 fourth times 1 tenth is 1 fortieth which I think as a decimal turns out to be 0.025. And so this is going to come out to be 2.025. Now if you go to a calculator and see what this is, I think it comes out to be 2.02481, what is it, 4.57, which is you know, 2.025 is a very good approximation for that, okay? And we didn't have to work very hard to do that. Following the tangent line, as long as the point that we're interested in is close to the point in question, is a pretty good thing. But you could do this for any point nearby. So you could do 3.99. What's the square root of 3.99? Well, I don't know, but a good approximation would be L of 3.99. You just plug it into this function L and calculate this out and that's it. And this is something you can actually do by hand. You wouldn't need a calculator to do that. The question of how the calculator does a square root in the first place is something that should bother you. And we're not prepared to answer that in this semester, but that's something that you will answer in calculus too. Anyway, um, you can use this linearization to calculate the value along that tangent line for any point whatsoever. Now, of course, if you follow the tangent line far enough, it will, it will not look anything like the, the curve, because the line will go on up like this, and the curve will just uh, bend a little bit more. So if you were to plug in like 100 into the linearization, you shouldn't be surprised that the linearization of 100 is not real close to the square root of 100. All right, the square root of 100, we know it's 10. The linearization would be 10 minus 6 is, 10 minus 4 is 6, divided by 4, that's about 1 something. Added to 2, that's 3 something. So yeah, the tangent line doesn't do a real good job of approximating the curve under this circumstance. But, you know, you're not anywhere near 4 when you're plugging this in. So, um, nevertheless, this equation 
is the equation of a line in a slightly different disguise. Now, as if that weren't enough, we're going to look at this derivative idea, the slope of the tangent line, in yet one more way. And we're going to talk about something called differentials. So I have to start by defining something for you. We're going to define, well, let's suppose first that y be equal to a function of x. So y is a dependent variable, dependent upon x, and this is the function that y represents. And we're going to introduce a new variable. Let y be some function of x, and let, you ready for this? D x dx, this one thing all by itself, be a new independent variable. Now this is weird. We've never used two letters to stand for a variable before, but you can. You do it in programming all the time. Let dx be a new independent variable. We can do that. So that means if I changed x, I wouldn't expect anything to happen to dx. If I change dx, I don't expect anything to happen to x. If I change x, I expect y to change. But nothing necessarily happens here. If I change y, nothing has to happen to dx. Okay, dx is a new independent variable. And now I'm going to define what we mean by dy. Define dy to be the derivative of f, that would be f prime of x, multiplied by this new independent variable dx. Now, you can see how this is rigged. This is just totally, totally rigged. I mean, divide both sides by dx, and what do you get? dy dx equals the derivative. Duh. So what's the big deal? Why do we want to introduce this kind of language? Well, for one thing, it allows us to look at this dy dx thing as if it were actually a fraction, as if these two parts were, were separable. You could divide the equation up. Now, this is a dangerous thing to do. I do not recommend splitting this dy dx, except under very, very special circumstances. So generally, just don't do it. It will probably get you in trouble if you do. On the other hand, there are some very useful things that can be done if you talk about this differential, oh by the way, this dx is called the differential of x, and dy of course is the differential of y. So here's the picture, I think this is the real value of looking at this, of why we want to do this. Suppose that you have this function f, and you're looking at this function at a certain point where you're at, let's say, x. All right, if you go up to the graph at f of x, so this point, of course, is x, f of x, and you're interested in some point nearby, when, and this distance from here to there we're calling, of course, delta x, as usual. So this point over here would be x plus delta x. What's the y value right here? Well, the y value, of course, would be what you get if you go up to the curve. But maybe that's a little difficult to calculate. And maybe, as we've been talking about, it might be easier to follow the tangent line. All right, well, that's where we're going. But I want to look at this kind of a picture. If you go straight across here and straight up here. Now, there's two y values that are interesting. There's the y value along the line, that linearization that we've been talking about, and there's the y value here, which is that y value that you get by plugging in x plus delta x into the function. Okay, so on this triangle, actually there are a couple of triangles that we've drawn, on this big triangle, this distance right here is delta x. And what we're going to say is we're going to make that delta x equal to dx, this independent variable that we're talking about right now. 
So delta x and dx are exactly the same. Now, what happens when you take this tangent line? What is the slope of that tangent line? Well, of course, the slope of the tangent line is the derivative at x. So what do you, how do you calculate the slope of a line? Well, you take the difference in the y values and the difference in the x values and divide. So how far is it from here all the way up to the line? Well, of course, that must be the number that you would divide delta x by to give you the slope of the tangent line. Well, the slope of the tangent line is f prime of x, which we know is dy over dx. But if I make delta x and dx exactly the same, then the distance from here to the line would be dy. So dy is this much right here, going from this y value up to the line's y value above x plus delta x. <clears throat> that's dy. Now, this other distance from here to here, you could say that's exactly delta y. That's just the change in y. y changes from going from here to there. But you see that delta y might be a little bit of pain to calculate. Calculating the change in y is sometimes hard. So what we do in practice and all engineers and science people end up doing this at one time or another many times is that you want to know delta y. This is what the goal is, find delta y. And we end up using as an approximation for delta y, dy. So the picture is that dy goes from here to the line, delta y goes from here to the curve. And as long as delta x is small, you can get away with using dy as the approximation for delta y. So let me do this example again with the square root that I did with the linearization. And it's a little bit nicer even here, because here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say that the this point here, x, is now my 4. This function, now f of x, is going to be the square root of x. And this point over here is my 4.1. So the delta x, of course, is 0.1. Well, what we're interested in doing is getting an approximation for the square root of 4.1. Oops, 4.1. And the square root of 4.1 is exactly the square root of 4, starting here, plus delta y. And you see, the problem is that, you know, in my head, I can't compute delta y. I don't know how to get from here to here. I don't know how to calculate this. But I do know how to get from here to there. I can compute dy. And dy is given by this formula right here up at the top. dy is f prime of x times dx. So I need to calculate the derivative. Well, we've done the derivative of the square root before. That's just going to be 1 half x to the minus 1 half. And it's not the derivative at every point. It's the derivative right here at x equal to 4. So if I plug in 4 here, you know what that's going to be. Replace x by 4, and you get 4 to the minus 1 half, which is 1 half times another half, which gives you 1 fourth. So this is our f prime of x. So here's what's happening. Square root of 4 plus delta y. Delta y, we're taking our approximation of delta y to be dy. dy is the derivative times dx. So instead of dy, I'm going to put the derivative 1 fourth times dx. And remember I said dx and delta x are the same, so delta x, dx are both 0.1. So here's the story. You calculate the y value at a point that you know, which is really easy to do, square root of 4, and then you tack on this dy, which is the value of the derivative, times delta x, which is the same as dx. So in terms of differentials, 
we take the square root of this number 4.1 by taking the square root of our known value which is nearby and tacking on the differential of y. And the differential of y is by definition the derivative times the differential of x. The derivative we calculate the slope of the tangent line that's easy one fourth and then you multiply it by dx. So in general let's just make the picture much much cleaner and summarize this. So in general if what you want is to calculate the value of the function here at x plus delta x and you know the value of the function here so this is known and this is unknown so that is unknown so what do you do well you say take f of x plus delta x to be approximately equal to f of x plus the differential of y which in other words is f of x plus the derivative at x f prime at x times dx or delta x it's the same thing okay so you tack on the derivative times your delta x to the previous y value now when I was a student I had a really really hard time with this because as I told you before I was not a practical minded person and so when somebody said to me well I want to approximate f of x plus delta x I would say well why don't you just use f of x as the approximation because if x plus delta x is close to x then f of x plus delta x and f of x are going to be close together and that's true but the thing is being a, a practical person what you would want is a better approximation. This number is a far better approximation for the true y value here than f of x would be. So you've got to do better. Anyway, that is um, how these things are used a lot in practice. Now, there's one other thing that we need to talk about, and this is the easiest thing of all. It's so unbelievably, ridiculously easy. What we're going to do here is find the differential calculate the differential. <laughs> Doesn't that sound like calculate the derivative? Well, guess what? It's just about the same thing. y equals x squared. Find the differential. The differential of y. Well, we know what dy dx is, don't we? dy dx would just be 2x. So if you multiply both sides by this dx, you get dy equals 2x dx. You're done. This is it. The differential of y is 2x times the differential of x. You could do that from here by just mindlessly taking the derivative of both sides and sticking a d whatever on the end of every variable you see. So here you take the derivative. The derivative of y would be 1 and then you stick on a dy. Here the derivative is 2x you stick on a dx. It's that simple. Let's do another example. Suppose you want the differential of y equals sine of log of x. Well, take the differential on the left, you get dy. The differential on the right, the derivative of sine is cosine of whatever. Of course, the chain rule has something to say. You've got to multiply by the derivative of what's in sine. 1 over log of x. And now at the very end, it's, there's no derivative of what's inside. Well, it would be 1, but it's multiplied by dx. And that's it. You've now taken, calculated the differential. dy is this. And if you had to multi, if you had an expression like x squared times 3y, now let's make it 3y cubed. You could calculate the differential of an expression. What's the differential of that expression? Well, it's a product, so I've got to use the product rule. So you'd have the first times, whoops, times the differential of the second. So that would be 3 times 3 is 9. Y squared, guess what you put here? dy. That's first times the differential of the second plus the second, 3y cubed, 
times the differential of the first, 2x dx. I have calculated the differential of this expression. It's just like taking derivatives, only easier. You don't think about which one's the independent variable anymore. You just stick on a dx or a dy, as the case may be, depending on which variable you're talking about at the moment, and that does it. There's lots of applications to this, but we're not going to be going in that direction. Um, there are a bunch of exercises where you are asked to calculate the differential, and they're not this bad. All the questions are like this, where they give you y equals some complicated function of x, and the answer is dy equals, and you just take the derivative on the right, and at the very end, stick on a dx, and that's the end of the story. Okay, so that's it for now. See you later.